Welcome back, everybody. Grand Tactician, Civil War. Grumpy Grandpa Gaming is episode 36 of our Rebel Summer 61 campaign using the AOM mod. Uh, first things first, apologies that there was no Monday episode. Uh, I was just a little too exhausted after I'd gotten back from uh, Gettysburg to even uh, begin trying to work on one and uh, got back pretty late too. So, kind of did put it off for uh, the beginning of the week. So, uh, here we are. Right, we're last left off with the campaign. We just fought the fourth battle of St. Paul, seeing off the uh, two corps from the Army of Southwest Missouri. There's still two more corps up there. One more from the Army of Southwest Missouri and one from the Army of... I can't remember which army. Yeah, that's it. Army of the Cumberland. <laughs> so we still got two more corps floating around up there. It was a pretty close battle towards the end. Uh, there was some shenanigans going on with the AI, but we did end up, end up muscling through it. Uh, the Indian Army is still up north at uh, Duluth along Lake Superior. And I'm waiting for their readiness to come back up so I can get them to actually start constructing on a fort up here to retain control of the iron mines in the area. Just south of there in Missouri, the Engineer Corps is still building fortification at Warsaw. It will be complete in four more days. As soon as that is done, they're actually going to be uh, shuttling up here to Chicago and then up towards uh, Antonogon up here in the Upper Peninsula and building another fortification there as there is actually another one or two iron mines in this area I need to uh, gain control of as quickly as possible and deny their use to the Federals and uh, start getting some money from them into our coffers. Traveling Harem is still sitting at Chicago in preparation for the Spring Offensive and its readiness is coming up slowly but we're all blockaded up here with the uh, new Erie Squadron that's sitting in the uh, Lake Michigan right now. Army of Canwell has moved to St. Louis for their winter quarter so they can actually get their readiness back up and uh, refit. So uh, Army of Western Tennessee has moved down to their old location at Cairo to take up service there. We did have a disastrous naval engagement down here at Galveston where we lost the CSS Virginia. Uh, I wouldn't call it disastrous. We did win the engagement. We did capture one of the federal ships, but we lost the Virginia in the process and the trade-off was just not worth it. And I st I'm still of the opinion that that was a glitch that caused us to lose to Virginia. But there's just really no way of telling. I'm pretty sure it was a glitch. The uh, Mobile Bay Squadron is still refitting at Corpus Christi as soon as they're ready to go again. Hopefully I can get them up here to finally finish off that fleet at Galveston and get these ports free, clear, and open for us. And we still have the 3rd Corps Army of Virginia, which we fought at the last engaged in the Cumberland, which I forget which engagement that was, but it was two episodes ago. And that was 5th Cumberland Gap. It is, uh, did not retreat far. They only went as far as, uh, not even that far as the town of London. They just kind of sat here and built a supply depot, and uh, they just continue to sit there. And I don't mind that. I, we know exactly where they are. And over here in Virginia, Federal Army, the uh, Coastal Department, did manage to sneak into Richmond behind us. I am sending the Army of Shenandoah down to uh, reestablish control of Richmond and then see off the Coastal Department. It looks like they're on their way right now to uh, Fortress Monroe to besiege that, or they could just continue sitting here because I don't think they have the manpower to pull it off or the artillery. It says they have 6,500 men and 10 guns. Uh, not a big problem for us. We can basically wipe the map with them pretty easily because they are less than a division in strength. Uh, not less than a division. It's kind of a... Yeah, we're going to 1863. So that's kind of 1863 numbers for a division right there. And the one railroad that we do have under construction is coming along quite nicely. It's now 68% complete. And as soon as that one is finished, we'll begin working on the uh, Monroe Shreveport line. So we'll have the ports of Texas connected all the way up through northern Louisiana and running into Arkansas, which should help our logistics quite handily because some of these ports are clear and not blockaded. This, the problem is the Delta rail line does start at Galveston, so I do need that blockading fleet gone. And then we should have some nice revenue flows coming out of the uh, Galveston port there. All right, I think that covers everything for right now. So outside of the Army of Shenandoah trying to engage the uh, Coastal Department, there's really not much going on right now, so I'll be back with the next incident.
All right, it's now December 13th. It's taken two more days for the Army to shut and Doe to get down into Richmond. And there are actually more Union forces here than uh, I initially anticipated, as there was a second corps, the uh, first corps army of the James, actually inside of Richmond, which we did not have any intelligence on whatsoever. So they're bringing 10,873 infantry, 410 cavalry, two guns, and command of OC Ord. Going up against Johnston with his 13,845 infantry, 723 cavalry, and 21 guns. So, uh, we're gonna make this battle happen as quickly as possible. It's not as bad as whether it's the fourth battle of St. Paul. It's 36 degrees, and looks like a lot of snow has cleared off the ground over here. So, uh, let's go jump into here and kick him the hell out of our capital. Welcome, everybody, to the third battle of Richmond. It is a meeting engagement, but we are actually starting out basically right on top of the uh, defense point, which is uh, Shady Grove Church. So we're going to take that right away. The Federals are starting down here by Newbridge, down on the Chickahominy River. So they do have a little bit of a ways to get to us. Now, what I'm hoping to do, because I wasn't really crazy, because we did have this defense point last time, I wasn't really crazy about how my forces were aligned along this, along this uh, line here. So I want to try and quickly get my infantry down here onto these heights above Beaver Dam Creek and set up along here to basically stop the Federals with the artillery behind, which can oversight them from the hilltops. And leave my cavalry over here along Shady Grove Road as a blocking force, just in case. So, this because this is nominally better defensive terrain for us. It looks like it's going to be better defensive terrain. So Federal should be coming down this road if the AI comes right up out and up onto the road network. They could bypass and go up along this way, but that's why I have the cavalry going to set up a blocking position there. Actually, that should be the road they come along right there. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get my forces moving in that direction. So uh, now December 14th, so we did shoot over to the next day because of the winter conditions. And it's 8 a.m., so we do have most of the day for this fight. All right, so now going on 9.30 in the morning of December 14th, and we do have contact with Federal Cavalry. Uh, the Cavalry, and it looks like their infantry is right back here, managed to get across the creek here before we were able to get into position. So we're going to be fighting them just to... A little bit more forward of where we did last time. Last time we set up defensively along this line here. So we're just uh, maybe a mile ahead of that by the way these maps are drawn. Not too far ahead of that. But uh, getting there just in time. The Federals moved with a lot more alacrity than I'm used to seeing them do. So Jackson's division is getting in place. Uh, French's division is going to be pulling up onto their right as soon as they are in position. Uh, I do have the artillery moving up now. Calvary's over here once again in a defense position in case anybody else comes down Shady Grove Road here. And then I'm going to have Yule move up into reserve once the artillery is past him. Just uh, always takes forever for the artillery. Oh, I never dismounted you boys. Six Pennsylvania, 250 men in that regiment. Amazing, we've done a lot of damage to the Federal Cavalry in some of these engagements. Never usually get a crack at them, but uh, they've given us quite a few uh, chances to get our hands on them in the last few engagements. Too. That'll be good right there. Come on, boys, keep coming on down the road. French is not too far off. Oh, you need to hold. You are not going out in front of the lines and marching into position. That is not happening. 
Yeah, same thing now. Two brigades here, they do not want to be running into. Now, if everybody's wondering, today's battle brew is Oak Cross. Last a few seconds, get some cans. Somebody else was right behind them. It doesn't look like. Yeah, well, but I think we're on fairly decent ground right here. I'm not really crazy about that light slope right there, but uh, we have Bees Brigade to cover that. Uh, you know what, you guys can march around the front now since there's nobody there to s distract you this time. All right, I'll be a few minutes still before, uh, hello. Now, I have a feeling these boys are going to come down this road and make a left here, so I'm not too worried about that, but just in casey. Let's pull you guys back to face that direction. They may come straight at us. Where's that artillery? I'm still... Uh, once again, they are all over each other. Their division commander should be much, much better than this at this point. Is that Samuel Jones? Still not showing any experience, even though he's had command of that force for a very long time now. All right, start marching you all up out to this field here. It should keep them on a separate road for the most, maybe not. I'm just marching back there anyway. All right, like I said. Yeah, and they are turning down that road. All right, it'll be a few minutes yet, so I'll be back. All right, it's now 1046, and the first federal division is starting to arrive. And uh, this corps is made up of the Pennsylvania Reserves. So we have the uh, second Pennsylvania Reserves here, the Philadelphia Brigade, the other Pennsylvania Cavalry, and 3rd Pennsylvania Reserve Brigade coming up. With the 1st Pennsylvania, 5th Brigade, there's going to be some generics in coming also. But, uh, Ward's had enough time to issue orders for them to uh, not march down the road like this, and it looks like he's decided not to issue those orders out. Cavalry Regiment went away real fast. Look at good hit canister right 
there. So I pushed down that farm track. I was just starting to cover up. Well, the Alpha Brigade only had 500 men left in it. For 1862, that is low for a brigade. Even though they actually have batteries assigned to this core, they actually have no guns. So actually, the, uh, the 1st Pennsylvania Artillery Battalion is actually made up of uh, four infantry brigades. But uh, Maryland Light Battery, which is their only battery, has no guns in it. Which I thought was very interesting. Battle line, really. Unless you're moving forward in an assault column, which I never see used. Nope, getting in the battle line now. This is not the best terrain. I gotta push them forward to at least here. This battle's already won. Look at that. Oh, the tool tip not showing up. I didn't even check federal morale before the start of this. It's already at 28. They are done already. All the rest of my guns, here they come. This way, this time, like I did last time. Bunch of fresh full strength brigades back here, but hopefully, we do that mean pretty easy, I think. Breckenridge, give it to him. Well, they actually engage the equal range without marching into us. That's a first. Looks like they're pulling back. I'll let them go. 
Barto's brigade's level nicely for this fight. And they are already withdrawing. Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna have a chance to get the cavalry up here. so I can even target them. Eh, let's just beat this along now. Wow, Ward. I expected a little better out of you. All right, we took down 1,500 or 11,000 infantry, 200 or 400 cavalry. They have no guns on the field. Almost 1,700 of their 11,000 men. We lost 126 by 13,840 infantry, and that was it, thankfully. Which was a little bit lower. I feel better about this victory. <laughs> Alright, once again, there are no fewer units in this force. So uh, we're just going to take a quick look to see if we got any of their officers. Never saw Ord. Wounded Brigadier General Ammon of the 3rd Brigade. Wounded Brigadier General Spears of the 1st Pennsylvania Reserve. And we got two Brigadiers wounded in this fight. Okay. I'll take it. Normally it's a bunch of uh, captains, but they didn't have any batteries for us to have fire rides. So no captains got wounded this time. And I'll see you all the newspaper screen. A victory at the 3rd Battle of Richmond. And they blamed it on General Owen. Don't know what he commanded. Hopefully it's one of their division commanders at least. All right, battle, fourth battle, of, out of that, fourth, third battle of Richmond. That's <laughs> ended with the first corps retreating in panic. Uh, first corps army of the James, specifically. As a reporter suffered total casualties of 1,678 men. There are 255 killed and 338 captured. Our casualties total 126 men with 17 killed, 16 missing, and the rest were wounded. We captured 783 rifles and no guns from the field, sent 339 soldiers off to our prison camps. All right, let's get started getting that one rolled off. And Zalapa has fallen. The French invasion continues. Hopefully that means they're closer to an intervention. So we already guaranteed the intervention. It's just a matter of them kicking the damn thing off. All right, that battle was actually fought on December 14th because it was so late in the day. They automatically jumped over to the next day. So it's going to take a little bit to roll up. As soon as we have resecured Richmond, we're marching straight down the road and going to kick Coastal Department back out of our AO. 
All right, it's now December 19th, and we do have our next engagement. This is the uh, Army of Shenandoah in pursuit of the 1st Corps Army of the James Down of Peninsula. So we have run into them again over here at Williamsburg. So they are now fielding 9,659 infantry, 287 cavalry, and two guns by our report. So I'm assuming they don't, they still don't have any guns whatsoever. Once again, we're bringing 13,780 infantry, 735 cavalry, and 22 guns. So I'm going to try and complete this battle as quickly as possible as the Coastal Department has now begun a siege at Fortress Monroe, though. I really don't see them having any chances of finishing the siege. I still don't like it, so we want them gone as quickly as possible. And I was hoping to have uh, both these corps gone by uh, Christmas so the men can have a nice, relaxing uh, time in camp, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. So, uh... Once again, let's jump in there and show Ordy that does not know what he's doing. Welcome, my grunts, to the Battle of Williamsburg. We are on the attack this time around, and uh, I don't know if you hear my voice, but the background right now, you hear this uh, nice strong storm that we got going on right now for this attack we have coming in. So we're already starting out with a minor victory. Federal morale is starting at 26 points, so it's already 11:19 in a day. There's no way we were starting an action before nightfall. We have a snow storm. It's 35 degrees, and yeah, you can see the cloud covers right down here at our eye level. It is. This is just not <laughs> good weather to be in. I'd be hating my commander right now, making me march around in this shite. Oh, But the plan for right now is to uh, come right down through the town of Williamsburg, following the Hampton Road, and come out down here, south of the halfway house, which is the defense point along the Yorktown Road that they are defending. So we're going to attack up this way, which looks like the best point of attack for us is to move this way, because this is the clearest area with the least amount of obstruction in our way. So I'm looking to uh, sweep up through this way. It's not quite cold enough for the streams to be frozen, though we may get lucky and the temperature will drop overnight, which will make it even worse for the men. They're going to be soaking wet and freezing. But uh, it is what it is. I mean, I've had to you know, do stuff in weather like this myself. And, but never in wool. That's got to... Ugh. I mean, wool's warm when it's wet, but, I mean, you're just going to be heavy and you're going to freeze over. Uh, yeah, it's just, it, this is, like I said, I've trained in conditions like this before. It is just horrid, 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 horrid. There's just no other word for it. So I'm going to get my troops on the move, and like I said, it should be a, a day to assault for us. Alrighty, it's now 1523 of day one, and, uh, We've actually managed to slide in, down and behind the Federals. Looked like they expect them to come down through Burwell's Mill and along the Yorktown Road, and they are not set up for us at all defensively. So we've actually slipped into town. Uh, I did secure this entry point that they held over here, and I'm moving to secure this one. Doesn't really make a difference in the fight, but it does make me feel a little better. I have Stonewall's division, up. Yeah, Stonewall's division moving into place at the halfway house. I moved the First Virginia Cavalry up forward. I'm not going to move them any closer. I probably couldn't do it safely. Get him dismounted loose over along this fence. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move him up here to this fence, First Virginia. Get him dismounted loose order and delay until Stonewall's division is in place. Uh, had some weird maneuvering going on while I was looking for the Federals, wondering where in God's green earth they were. And they're well forward of the uh, point. Where are you guys going? What the hell is going on there? Not trips. Okay, I gotta move another division up. Orders have gotten a little weird as I was trying to move units around, so I'm gonna send these guys straight up the road. Starting with you, you're right there on it. them start moving, I'll start moving the rest of the brigades that are not on top of each other. And the weather has gone. 
I wouldn't say worse, it's gotten colder, but the rain has finally gone away. It's actually dropped. It's now 13 degrees, so it's actually warmed up a little bit. Uh, less than an hour after I started movements, uh, it dropped down to 10 degrees and started snowing hard. It was, uh, yeah, if you were soaking wet and cold and temperature dropped by 24 degrees. Now it's gotten three degrees warmer. Not much consolation with that, to be honest with you. I want their battery on the road right next to them. These movements have gotten a little weird. Hopefully these brigades clear them across the road before things get any weirder. Federals are still not reacting. That's probably because we have not captured the point yet. Now your first Virginia, you're gonna be a little bit of a sacrifice. These boys clear the road and move uh, heads brigade forward. Looks like it'll be a few minutes yet before we have a combat, so uh, I'll be back. I am so friggin' disappointed right now. So we hit the overnight, and OC Ward has withdrawn his forces. So as soon as we hit 1700, that was over. So we had no combat whatsoever. I should have. He had cavalry and force federals to do something. But, uh, I thought they might have fought us going to day two, but I shouldn't have known the morale was too low, too low for me to try. So, uh, no casualties for anybody. We just gotta see where they're gonna be retreating off to this time. Alright, even though it's a victory at Williamsburg, there was no fighting there. Sadly, not. We actually worked our way around into a very good position. It was actually starting to slow and circle the first core here. So uh, they're going to start immediately withdrawing, probably back down the road towards the coastal department. We are going to immediately chase. Uh, Rennes is getting low from all the marching, so probably down to yell by the time we catch up to them, if not lower. So it does take, with the weather conditions the way they are, it does take several days to move short distances. But we will continue the pursuit. And I'm really, I'm really pissed at that battle. I meant, I, because I played a game at one time speed when I'm not uh, doing a live stream. So it took me well over an hour to move everything into position just for nothing to happen. Sadly, sadly disappointed. But it happens. And it does happen. Like I said, maybe if I throw my cavalry forward. We probably could have gotten something, but who knows? Who knows? So they're probably going to fall back here on the Yorktown or fall back on top of the Coastal Department, which will draw us into that siege, and then I'll bring it over to a general engagement. Uh, everything else still looks quiet for right now. So there is that. Engineer Corps has finally finished the uh, fortification at Warsaw, and they are now on their way to Chicago using the rail lines. It's taking them about a week to get from Warsaw up to uh, Jefferson City. But now they're in Jefferson City, they can ride the rails all the way to Chicago and not lose much readiness. It's, uh, if they get the Fond du Lac, it's going to take them a long time to get up to uh, Ortonagon, which, like I said, I do want. There's two more iron. There's another iron mine up here and two copper mines I really do want to take control of. And I actually didn't notice this earlier, but uh, there's another town up here, St. Vincent, up by the Canadian border. I didn't even realize that was there. So uh, I think coming the spring offensive in the Army of Mississippi is going to be chasing these guys all the way up to St. Vincent on the Canadian border, which you know, I would like to kick control of because that's a big trade IP with Canada. So 
And I did start forming a new fleet down here at St. Louis, the uh, Great Lakes Squadron. I don't know if we can make it into the Great Lakes from here because of this ford right here. I don't know if we can clear that and get into the lakes itself. If not, I'll try to use them to once again clear the uh, Mississippi River. And I've added more ships into it this time. So we got three third rates moving in, a fourth rate, and the ship's tender. Uh, the Atlanta and the Georgia are now 75% complete. They've actually sped up a bit since we captured those iron mines. So I, mean, I guess it was the, the extreme lack of iron that we had that was slowing down the construction of the ship. So as their construction speed had sped up a lot. Still going to be a while before they're finished. But taking control of the iron mines has definitely helped us. Uh, the new frigates are now 47% complete. And the brig that we captured is under repair for another 32 days. As soon as these ships are ready to go, they'll be joining our fleet down in the Gulf. So every available tonnage, every piece of available tonnage that we have will be utilized because we did lose quite a few of the smaller fleets to small actions. All right, looks like it's going to be a little while before anything else happens. I don't want to end this episode just yet because I feel like it'd just be way too short and I've been skimping on the videos lately. So I want to try and see if we can get ourselves another action. But if we don't get one by January 1st, I'll be ending the video there. Oh, here we go. We'll up to Army of James again. just outside of Yorktown. We're still, we're still basically at Williamsburg. They did not go very far. It's already 15.30, so it's probably gonna jump over to December 21st, which will give us all day for the fight. Yeah, we're jumping into this one. Welcome everybody to the second battle of Williamsburg. So we're starting out later in the day. It's 1516. Day ends at uh, 1700. Uh, federal morale is actually higher this time. We do have slightly better weather. It's 35 degrees, partly cloudy. And we're starting the same exact point as last time. They're defending the same exact point as last time. So I'm going to continue to move on with the same plan that I had at the last battle. And we're going to see if they're still here at the start of day two. Hopefully they are. Hopefully they are. I really do want to uh, get this core out of the way. Once again, Ward has decided to withdraw, which actually kind of surprised me a little bit as his morale actually climbed throughout the day. He was actually uh, up into the 40s and uh, climbing towards the 50s. Uh, a little surprised he withdrew, but he did choose to withdraw. Kind of, I mean, if these forces are going to withdraw, I wish they'd be on a campaign map and not force me into a fight. It's getting really annoying. It is really getting annoying. So uh, we're going to continue this pursuit, and um, hopefully we can run them to ground with the Coastal Department. Uh, if this, a fight like this happens again, I, I know we're going to withdraw again. I'm just going to take it off screen. All right, we did run Ord to get around a third time, but this time, because I did not want to deal with him getting away again, I did send it over to an auto resolve, just because it's getting ridiculous. And with the auto resolve, at least we're getting a fight out of it. So for right now, he is doing some casualties to us, but it looks like we're going 2-1 on the odds with the casualties for right now. And fighting should resume here at 8 a.m. There we go. It looks like a lot of the artillery is what is doing the work against them, but they are breaking. Second Pennsylvania Reserve Brigade's already broken. Fifth Brigade's broken. Eighth Pennsylvania Cavalry should probably be next. Yep, we got him over a thousand casualties. We're jumping up there too, though, pretty quickly. I'm not happy with that, but we need to do something about this guy. He's just getting annoying. Most of my casualties coming out of. Looks like I lost about 200 cavalry. 
I had around 700 for the uh, core. Now it's down to 544. So it looks like one of our cavalry regiments took a beating. Yeah, 1st Virginia, down to 202 men. They took a beating. That was actually the stronger cavalry regiment. There we go. Finally, a victory at Yorktown. Nobody took any blame for the loss this time, though. All right, Emmett's Fortress suffered total caches of 1,619 men. They have 201 killed and 616 captured. Our caches stole 848 men with 140 killed. 848 men, Jesus. Not like we have a lot of men in this core. 140 killed, 105 missing, and the rest are wounded. We've captured 592 rifles and zero guns from the field and sent 524 soldiers off to our prison camps. All right, let's pause this real fast and see if we lost any officers out of this command. Anybody get wounded and replaced? It'll be Head, Smith, Breckenridge, Heyman, Adams. You're already in charge of that. First MSG, State Rights gets this correct. First Virginia, Bowen. McDonald's wounded, 7th Virginia. All right. We got another Virginian available. We should definitely have that. There we go. We got plenty of them. We got more officers available for Virginia than we do actual infantry. Uh, I think Mumford's a good choice. Wickham's a better choice. But I think we're going to put Pryor in charge. I need more state support. I need more men recruited out of Virginia. So, for political expediency, I'm going with the uh, political appointment on this one. Looks like uh, Pry is going to take command of 7th Virginia. Or, yeah. Right, that knocked us down to the yellow. It does not look like they have retreated at all, though. So, we're going to keep pushing this in. So, I'll be back. Right, it's now December 29th. We have ourselves another naval engagement here out of uh, Galveston. It looks like we run down the uh, Wyandotte, the Brooklyn, and the Kennebunkport with the Alamo Fire Eater and Charles Moore. My ship's already damaged going into this fight. Hopefully it's not that big of a difference, but it just might be. Oh, ready to sandal the uh, Wyan Dote. That's a fourth-rate steamer. Really not worth much. 4% left. I'm surprised we didn't sink that. Funny thing is, there is an entire fleet here, but we only ever seem to see three ships at a time. All right, got the Brooklyn down to 75%, and that's a steam frigate. And that's a bark. Really don't want... Oh, Brooklyn's disabled also. We might be making a good grab here. Oh, we sunk the kind of bunk port. But we captured Wando into Brooklyn. That's actually a good grab for us. Yeah, see, Squadron's still in the area. Still says it has 11 ships, 8 disabled. But we only ever seem to find three of them in an engagement at a time. So it's taking a while to wear down this fleet. He's on his way to Indianola. I'll have to reshift them back down to Corpus Christi for full repairs as that's not a blockaded port. That was a nice little turn of events from the last fight. It looks like we got Federals on the move again. It looks like the uh, Army Southwest Missouri is starting to make another move. Somehow Lee's readiness just never... He, he has the slowest readiness recovery of all the officers. It's getting really annoying. He's supposed to be a really good administrative officer. Indian Army is still slowly recovering. I'm almost following the orange where I can get them to start building that uh, fortification up there. Engineer Corps has made it up to Fond du Lowe. And I'm going to let them sit there till after the New Year, because it's about to turn into January 1st. So I'm going to let them spend the New Year there before I send them marching up into uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is not good to be at that time of year. Not a good place to be. Feel bad for them. I got to order it forward. 
All right, we do have the first core of the Army of the James and the Coastal Department pendant against Fortress Monroe. I have decided to leave the Army of Shenandoah at Yorktown to get their readiness back up again until uh, at least halfway green. It'll take, uh, it says 81 days for full readiness. And yeah, they're not getting too much in the way of provisions where they are. But uh, the siege here is not drawn in the other core, so they're not ready for a fight, even though they're right there within engagement and distance. And we're actually about to win this. It says 11 more days. It might end right before then. So actually, no, we'll wait till after the new year for this order also. Have the men, let the men have a little bit of celebration. So things are moving a pace. Slow pace, but moving a pace. <laughs> We're slowly getting to where we want to be. All right, you get down to Corpus Christi. You repair faster there. Now's the readiness of our new uh, Great Lakes squadron. If it even, even makes it up oh, there at full green, can we get them into the lakes? We just might be able to do that. Well, it says it, it says they can make it. We'll see. I want to take this squadron out and free up our trade with Canada. Can't let the Federals have an all the fun with Canada. Speaking of which, these guys just... Whoa, did one of them finally cross the border? It says Army of Canada is actually over the border, though. They're not controlling the Roost Point. Huh. No, and that's Fort still under federal control, so... This is a, an estimated location, so I guess they're not exactly there. Damn it, I thought the British were finally going to do something after saying they were getting involved in the war a year ago. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Actually, what I think might be holding them back from the full intervention, and I didn't even think of this, is the level 5 diplomacy. We did not unlock it. And I think that may be what is holding them back. Maybe. But we are working on Conscription Act 1. That's going to be another 141 days to complete. And then I'll run over to Diplomacy 5. That's another 90 days. So Lord knows if we'll even have it done before the end of the campaign. Same with the Conscription Act. That's another one. You'll be cutting it close on the end of the campaign. But I would like to see them cross the border and actually do something. All right, it's now December 31st. So we'll just speed this map along a little bit. So basically just covered the outro about a day early. Trying to get you guys into port for the first. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Oh, and Dianola is no longer blockaded. They pull away. They just don't have the strength to reach down here anymore. That could be the case, too. What the hell is with that white puff of smoke right there? All right, it's now January 1st, so we're going to end this episode here so we can open up the next one with the January monthlies. So uh, once again, if you're a new viewer, return view, not yet subscribed, please take my hit that subscribe button. If you do, remember that bell icon so the next video comes out. Following along with the series and enjoying it, don't forget to hit being at that like button, butt stroke that comment section. Also, in other news, uh, I am going to be shifting my office around a little bit. I uh, got my workspace a little more conducive to the way I think I need to start doing things going forward. So uh, I'm hoping in the next two to three weeks, begin working on the audio books. Uh, so I'll probably have more information on that with the weekend's live stream. Once again, I'll see you in the next episode. Well, most we'll of the ability to speak for a second. <laughs> I will see you all the next episode. Stay grumpy.